Good morning. How are you on this going to be very sunny, hot day? So last Wednesday, I did not do a um, Wednesday devotional. And that was because I was suffering from what my youngest daughter calls pandemic brain. And that is when you don't really want to get out of bed. You can barely punch, punch your way out of a paper bag. And I didn't have any extra creativity to put out there. And so by the end of Wednesday, I realized I hadn't done it. And Thursday came and I was like, oh, and then I forgot. I apologize. But what it made me think about was that was a good thing that came out of that Wednesday is that I had to remember that I had to tap into resilience. And that's something that God gives us and is so essential right now when we're so close to what many of us perceive might be the end of the line. We're so close to being at that next stage where we get to do some of the things that we really love to do. But we need to sit on our hands and we need to be patient. And that's the tricky bit, right? So um, I went searching for some thoughts about resilience. And there are much smarter people out there than I am. And one of the people I found wrote about um, resilience was Rick, Rick Warren. I'm sure that some of you are very familiar with him. I can't remember offhand. Um, darn it. His book, uh, Purposeful... Uh, Oh gosh, I'm sorry. You'll know what it is. But um, so he wrote an article called Faith Produces Resilience, and I'd like to read it to you. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. That's from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to nine. Faith unlocks the promises of God and it shows us the power of God and it turns dreams into reality and it gives us the power to hold on in tough times. But faith doesn't always take you out of the problem. Faith often takes you through the problem. Faith doesn't always take away the pain. Faith gives you the ability to handle the pain. Faith doesn't take you out of the storm. Faith calms you in the midst of the storm. I remember reading the stories of Corrie ten Boon, a young Dutch Christian who helped many Nazis escape the Holocaust before being sent to the Nazi death camps. She said that the people who lasted in those camps were those who had the deepest faith. Why? Because faith gives you the power to hold on in tough times. It produces persistence. Remind me to tell you something about that. Study after study has shown that probably the most important characteristic you can teach a child and that you need in your own life is resilience. It's the ability to bounce back. It's the ability to keep going. Nobody goes through life with an unbroken chain of successes. Everybody has failures and mistakes. We all embarrass ourselves. We all have pain. We all have problems. We all have pressures. The people who make it in life have resilience. And so when I was teaching, um, I used to say practice makes permanent. Practice doesn't make perfect. We're not perfect. We certainly aren't perfect, but we can be have permanent sorts of behaviors and ways of thinking. And that's what resi resilience is. And we actually have to practice on that. So I found on a blog, and I will find the author of this blog. I am so sorry. I was scrolling through, found it, copied it, and then deleted it. And I need to find it so I can give this person credit. Um, this is, again, not my work. So she starts with um, a, a passage saying, um, though a righteous man falls, he rises again. Like any skill, mental, emotional, and spiritual resilience can be learned. Here's how. Redefine setbacks as a gateway to something greater. That's a challenge for us right now, right? But we can do it. Remember, redefine, excuse me, remember successful people don't just face adversity. They embrace it. Tune out the critics and focus on doing your best. 
Wake up every day remembering that prayer and gratitude create a fertile environment for faith. Increase your faith talk when you're afraid. Learn from failure and remember the many times you've succeeded. Visualize victory before going into battle. Refuse to dwell on the past or worry about the future. Today is where you have the most influence. Identify a problem. No, excuse me. Identify a solution instead of complaining. Replace self-doubt with, self, with faith talk. When things look hopeless, remember, with God, all things are possible. When you feel alone, think of all those who have helped you and who love and support you. Pray for guidance when you're in over your head. Rest when you're tired, but don't give up. Finish strong in everything you do. Remember, you can do all things through Christ when you think you can't. Recognize that you can't control. Focus on what you can or surrender the rest to God. Exercise physically to give yourself a sense of control and fight depression. Laugh to reduce stress, strengthen your immune system, and improve arterial blood flow. And lastly, be grateful. Research shows that people who sent a letter or email of thanks to somebody who helped them stayed in a better mood for up to a month. So throughout the Bible, there are passages that encourage resilience. In Joshua 1, verses, verse 9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God gave us spirit, not of fear, but of power and love of self and self-control. In Isaiah 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's pretty encouraging. So, off to have a great week, rest of the week, and a weekend of practicing your resilience. I know you can do it. Have a great one. Bye.